In this video, we're going to learn what a segmentation fault error is in C. And the goal is really just to give you a basic high level understanding of what causes this type of error so that you might get ideas about how to debug your own program. So basically, a segmentation fault error occurs at runtime when our program is executing and it tries to access or modify an area of memory that it's not allowed to access or modify. This type of error isn't specific to C. It's actually hardware that is going to detect and notify the operating system about this type of error occurring. When our compiled program is executed on hardware which uses memory protection, it's going to be given what's called an address space, which is a portion of memory that it's allowed to read, and there are also portions of that memory that it's allowed to write to as well. And it's this address space that the word segmentation refers to. When our program tries to read memory that it's not allowed to, or write to memory that it's not allowed to, this is what may cause a segmentation fault. So for example, let's declare an int array called data of length four, and we'll store into this array the numbers one, two, three, four. And these numbers are stored at the indexes zero, one, two, and three. That means we can access these indexes of the array. So for example, we could access and output the value at the index two by calling printf. Here we'll call printf and we'll pass it a string with percent %d to output an int value, followed by backslash n for a new line, and we'll output the value at the index two with data at the index two. And if we save this and compile our program and run it, we'll get here three. And that's because the array has the value three at the index two. But what if we try to output the value at the index 1 million? This array only has a length of four. There is no index 1 million. If we save the program and compile it, we'll first get a warning here. It says here, array index is past the end of the array. Let's try to run it. Now we get segmentation fault. And the issue is we're accessing memory that a program shouldn't. The array data is stored at some location in memory and we can see that location if we output data as a pointer. So here we'll call printf and we'll pass the string percent %p to output a pointer or memory address value. Then we'll have backslash n for a new line and we'll output data here. And when we have the array data like this, we say the array decays to a pointer where a pointer is really just a memory address. So what we'll get here is the memory address where this array is located. Then we'll have two here instead. And if we save the program now and compile it, and try it out, we'll see here the memory address that the array data is located at. And that's really determined at runtime when the program executes. Now, when the program accesses the int value at the index two, essentially what's happening is the program is going two int values worth of memory over from this memory address here, and we're accessing the int value there. Now, if we have 1 million here as the index, the issue is we're going way past the length of the array and we're going into memory that we shouldn't. Now, at least in this case here, the compiler can warn us about this. So if we save this and compile our program, we'll get that warning. But what if the index that we access in the array is determined at runtime? So for example, let's declare an int variable called index, which will initialize to zero. Then we'll call printf to prompt the user to enter the index. So we'll pass it the string index colon. Then we'll call scanf to accept an int from user input. So we'll call scanf and we'll pass it the string percent %d to accept an int value from user input and we'll pass it the second argument and index to store the entered int value into the index variable. Then we'll try to access the value in the array at this entered index value. So here we'll have index. So now if we save the program and compile it, we're not going to get a warning. It compiles okay. And that's because this time the compiler can't know if index is going to be in the valid range of array indexes. So if we run the program and we enter in, let's say two, it's going to be okay. But if we run the program and enter in 1 million, then we'll get a segmentation fault error again. So this is part of why segmentation fault errors can be a little tricky to debug. Because they occur at runtime, the compiler can't always give us a warning to help us. We can use a debugger or logging or the techniques to help identify where the segmentation fault occurs, but that might not tell us why it's occurring. So for example, to identify where the segmentation fault error is occurring in this program using a debugger, what we could do is compile the program using the dash G option. So here we'll have GCC dash G 
then dash o d and d dot c. Then we'll run the debugger with lldb dot slash d. We'll use run to run the program. I'll say allow here, and I'll enter in an index of 1 million. And then when the program crashes, the debugger tells us how and where. So it tells us the reason is exe bad access, which basically means bad memory access. And it tells us it happens at this line here where we access the data array. So now we have something to go on. And in a simple program like this, it's easy to see that index going outside the range of this array is the issue. But in a larger, more complex program, it's not always obvious what's causing the bad memory access to occur, even if we know where it's occurring. We might have to trace back further into more complex code. So we'll stop this debugger and resize the window. So there's a number of common ways that a segmentation fault error can occur. We would say this segmentation fault error occurred due to buffer overflow. Another type of error called the stack overflow can also cause a segmentation fault error. These can occur, for example, when we have infinite recursive function calls. So for example, let's create a recursive function called function. And all this function will do is call itself. We'll have here void function. And all the function will do is call itself with function. Then in main, we'll call function. So down here in main, we'll call function. So all we're going to do is have this function call itself forever. This is infinite recursion. We'll save this and compile our program and try it out. And we'll get here a segmentation fault error. And this time it's due to stack overflow. Every time the function calls itself, more information is pushed onto a data structure called the call stack which stores information about each function call. And when the space on the call stack that the program is allowed to access runs out, because the function keeps calling itself, a segmentation fault occurs. I'll post a link in the video description to a video covering stack overflows in more detail. Pointer variables, which store memory addresses and are used to access memory, can also be a source of segmentation fault errors. So for example, let's declare a pointer variable. Down here, we'll have int star p. What this will do is declare a pointer variable called p. And this variable is going to be a pointer to an int value. So the expectation is that p is going to store the memory address of an int value. We could declare an int type variable called x and initialize x to 5. Then we could have p point to x by storing its memory address. What we could have here is p is equal to and x, where and x is going to give us the memory address of x then we'll store that into p. So we say that p points to x. Then we could dereference p to access the value that p points to. So star p will dereference p, and this will give us access to what p is pointing to, in this case here, the variable x and the value 5. We could have put that value here using printf. So we'll call printf, and we'll pass it a string with percent %d to output an int value, followed by backslash n for a new line, and we'll have star p here to output the value that p is pointing to. If we save this and compile it and run it, we'll get here five. And so the program here is accessing what's at the memory address that's stored in p. Now, what if we never initialized p? What if we just declared it like this? This would be considered a wild pointer. And if we dereference a wild pointer, this could cause a segmentation fault error. The special value null is basically considered a pointer to nothing. If we try to dereference a pointer variable that's set to null, this could also cause a segmentation fault error. A segmentation fault error could also occur if we try to dereference what's called a dangling pointer. So we'll include the stdlib.h library, which includes functions for dynamic memory allocation like malloc, calloc, and free. Then down here, we'll call malloc where the malloc function is going to allocate a block of memory in a place in memory called the heap. It's going to return the memory address for that block of memory, which will store into p. We would then say that p points to this block of memory. The size of that block of memory in bytes is going to be based on the argument we pass to malloc. So here, if we pass size of int to malloc, what this will do is allocate enough space to store one int value. Then our program would typically do some work with this block of memory. Then when it's done with this block of memory, it would free it so it could potentially be reused. So we could call free and pass it P. 
and this would free the block of memory. The issue is that even after calling free, P is still going to store the memory address of this previously allocated and valid to use block of memory. We call this situation a dangling pointer. And if we dereference a dangling pointer, this could cause a segmentation fault error. So these are some common causes of segmentation fault errors, though I should note that getting a segmentation fault error isn't guaranteed due to these issues either. And there are other issues which can cause segmentation fault errors. Hopefully this video has given you a better sense of what a segmentation fault error is and can help you to debug your own programs when they occur. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.